So good morning everybody, my name is Christophe Fino and in this presentation I will discuss what we can do with two partially coherent fields that are temporally correlated. So I will explore how they can propagate in a fiber with nonlinearity. So this work is a result of a collaboration between the University of Bourgogne-Franche-Comté, the Laboratoire Interdisciplinaire Carnot de Bourgogne, and the Fresnel Institute of Marseille with Hervé Regnaud. So the idea this is to further explore the analogy that can be drawn between the spatial and temporal domain. If you start by the most simple example of wave, a plane wave which is monochromatic, if you limit this wave in the spatial domain, then you will be affected by the diffraction and in the 1D uh, case it can be simply uh, governed by this equation. Now, if you limit uh, your wave in the temporal domain, you will experience dispersion and, in this case, the propagation is ruled by these equations. And, as you see, the two equations are quite similar, they are formally identical, and this is the basis of the space-time analogy. Diffraction and dispersion are ruled by the same kinds of phenomena. This is well documented, there have been very good publications that have discussed this, and it has been already used for many applications in the temporal domain, mostly dealing with a coherent signal. So here the idea this is to go and explore what happens when the signal is partially incoherent. In the field of diffraction this is very well known, this is what is called speckles, and it is possible to shape this speckle, and for example there has been quite recently a work made by one of our co-authors that has uh, shown that it was possible from a speckle to generate two correlated uh, speckle and for this they use a spiral phase delay mask. So a spiral phase delay mask enables the creation of two complementary uh, speckle patterns. So we would like to do the same things in the temporal domain and to do this we have to move uh, to 1D problems and the equivalent of the temporal of the spiral phase max it uh, will be a Hilbert transform. So uh, this Hilbert transform this is quite easy this is just a pi shift between the negative and positive frequency of the spectrum but uh, from the practical point of view it is very hard to uh, to be achieved because it will create a notch filter at the central frequency so you will not be able to generate this is bolt transform in the temporal domain so what we have chosen to do this is to use instead of an Hilbert transform a first order differentiation it can be done all optically in the spectral domain and uh, there is another advantage is that uh, we can derive some analytical expression for the different quantity that we would uh, like to measure. So here are first some numerical simulations where I have plotted the initial temporal intensity profile that we consider in blue and the intensity profile that we consider after uh, optical differentiation and uh, this is in red. And what we see that this is that the two patterns are complementary when you have a maximum of uh, the initial temporal intensity profile then you get a minimum a value close to zero for uh, the other field and what we can also see this is that when you had uh, both intensity profile you have a structure that is larger in the temporal domain in other words you have increased uh, your current uh, with uh, adding the two fields uh, to have a better idea to better quantify the statistical properties of the resulting field. It can be interesting to record uh, the autocorrelation and cross-correlation signal. So we have run uh, thousands of uh, different uh, simulations and we see that um, the autocorrelation of the signal obtained after optical differentiation is very different uh, compared to the one that we had initially. And we can also see that the autocorrelation of the signal that is made from the sum of the two previous signal is broader. Regarding the cross-correlation, we can note that it has a particular structure where uh, the value of the cross-correlation is zero at uh, the center of the pattern. 
all the numerical simulation here are plot with uh, solid lines and we can retrieve this result analytically these are the circles that are in perfect agreement with the numerics so now, how do we proceed to generate these two fields? So we start from a source of amplified spontaneous emission. We polarize the source and we use a device that is sold by uh, Finisart, which is known as the wave shaper, that en enables us to make a spectral uh, shaping of the two fields. Here's this device. This is not the most standard one because we will be able to uh, to have two fields at the output on two different polarizations. So it will then be very useful to, to achieve the propagations. So with this, we are able to shave the intensity profile, to shave the spectral phase, and to have two different orthogonal polarizations. And typically, the width of the signal that we will consider, uh, it will be 20 gigahertz. And regarding the detections, we have recorded the optical uh, spectra and we have detected uh, the, the pulse strains that we obtained at, uh, on a uh, photodiode that is linked to the high-speed oscilloscope. So the results that are recording on this digital oscilloscope enable us to then calculate uh, the autocorrelation as well as the cross-correlation between the two signals and here are the results. In the spectral domain, we see that the experimental results that are plot with a solid line are fully in line with our theoretical expectation, with the target, uh, which are uh, the cycle. Now, in the temporal domain, we can see that we retrieve the main property that I have previously presented. So, uh, we have two complementary uh, patterns, and when we sum those two patterns, we have something that is broader, and the autocorrelation are in good agreement with the prediction, and this is also the case for the cross-correlation. However, to have a perfect agreement, we need to take into account the optoelectronic bandwidth. It limits uh, our detection stage. So we are able to generate the two fields uh, that are correlated. Now, uh, what happens when we propagate these two fields? Uh, in a dispersive medium. So here we have chosen to make the propagation in a fiber and uh, the, the question is this is how m can we uh, manage to synchronize both signal for the detection because here we really need to have a tight temporal synchronization and we can achieve this synchronization using polarization multiplexings and at the output we are able to isolate uh, the two signal and to detect them independently. So here the polarization multiplexing, this is really uh, the key of the setup and to test the linear propagation we have used a highly dispersive fiber which is a dispersive compensating fiber which is 13 km long. And the result that we have, this is that the propagation does not affect at all the different properties of the two correlated fields. We still have the same spectrum, we still have the same autocorrelation, and we still have the same cross correlations. Now, what happens if there is some nonlinearity that is experienced? So, when we would increase the power in the fiber propagation, there will be some consequences of current nonlinearity. There will be two kinds of consequences. There will be first the cell phase modulations that is induced by the signal itself, and there will be also a coupling between the two fields that propagate. It will be cross phase modulations. And to model this, we can use a Manakov model that is relevant for the fiber that we will use and as you will see there will be a coupling between the two states of polarization and this coupling may lead to the emergence of various current structures. It has been shown by one of the members of our group, Julien Fatome, in uh, his work that deals with polarization domain roads. And in one of the studies he made, he has shown that if you start from two completely uncorrelated uh, stochastic fields, then after propagation in presence of nonlinearity and coupling, it will 
tens to domain walls and as the signatures of those domain walls that are uncorrelated they will be a cross correlation that will become negative at the center of uh, the, uh, the cross correlations. So we will try here to see that uh, whether if we start from two from two trains that are uh, already correlated, if it will affect this dynamics. So before presenting the, the experiment, some numerical uh, results. So first, we see that if there is no coupling between the different states, then the, uh, the cross correlation will increase at the center of uh, the cross correlations. But now, if we have some coupling, the result will not strongly depend on the fact uh, that the, uh, the two uh, fields are correlated or not. We see that it seems to be rather close. So now let's see what happens uh, for the experiment. So here we have changed the fiber to have more nonlinearity, and we have included an abiobduct fiber amplifier to boost the signal that is sent in the fiber. And what we first see uh, this is that the uh, spectra of uh, the, the fields that are recorded at the output, uh, they are uh, they are changed, they are, uh, they are impacted by the level of nonlinearity and the broadens when you increase the input power. The results are in excellent agreement with the numerical simulation based on the Mannekoff model. What we can also see, this is that the autocorrelation signals are also affected by uh, the amount of non-linearity that we have. And now, regarding the cross-correlations, what we see, this is that when we change the power into the, fi into the fiber, there will be an influence on the level that we have at the center of this cross-correlation and this cr the, the central cross correlation will decrease. So we retrieve the conclusions of uh, Nature Photonics paper by Fatome. And what we see, this is that uh, we do not have very strong difference between the initially correlated or initially uncorrelated fields. In both cases, we have the same trends with its deep that appear at the center uh, part of the autocorrelations. Here, the, the experimental results are closely reproduced by numerical simulation. The shift that we observe between the two curves, this is just linked to uh, the limits of our detections and we, produ we reproduce it quite efficiently uh, numerically. Uh, so to conclude, we have investigated how two partially incorrelated optical fields with temporal correlations can be generated and then can propagate it uh, in a fiber. So we have checked uh, that uh, the dispersive propagation do not affect the properties of uh, the various fields. And we have also shown that when you induce uh, some nonlinearity, it will tend to something that is called the a domain world. And here, this is a very powerful attractor of uh, the propagation. Here, I've just forgotten to mention that the propagation in all the cases that we have studied was made in a normally dispersive fiber.